Okay, so we begin a new series today. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, New Living Translation. That is our foundation scripture. Acts 10, 38. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We'll title our discussion, Doing Good. Doing Good. So I remember, you know, a story that I have shared over and over again, but you know, it's my story. It was a, a, a life-changing moment, okay? And I can't stop sharing the story. That, uh, that there was a day I went for a visa interview and did not get the visa. And by the time I was walking out, I was absolutely convinced, you know, walking out of the embassy, that it was not the devil, that it was God, you know. The only thing, therefore, was to ask God what the issue was. <laughs> when I woke up the next morning, that was the discussion. So, Lord... What do you want me to do now? So obviously, you don't want me to go on this journey. So what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to build the church. They start. So I said, fine. And, and, and this was um, some 24 years ago. Okay, <laughs> so that was a long time ago. So I said, fine. The only thing is, it's not growing. And the Bible says that the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. So really, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that brings people to church. Why are you not bringing people? <laughs> you know, I want the church to grow. And then I got the shock of my life when the Holy Spirit asked me, why do you want the church to grow? It was like, how could God ever ask such a question? Doesn't he want people to know Jesus Christ and to come to church? But he asked me the question, why do you want the church to grow? And I thought for a second and said nothing because it occurred to me that there is nothing God does not know. He knows everything. So if he's asking you a question, obviously it's not because he wants to know I have come to the conclusion it's because he wants to confront you with your foolishness or something close to that. <laughs> At least that was the case for me. Anyway, I was silent. Then the Holy Spirit said, I know why you want the church to grow. You want to be more comfortable. You want to be more comfortable. You know that the bigger the church is, the more resourced it will be, the more comfortable you are going to be. He said, I want the church to grow, but that is not why I want the church to grow. I did not create the church for you. I created it for those people that I sent to you. Until you help them to succeed, you won't find the definition of success for your ministry. Life-changing moment. I will never forget it. And, and I feel in the same way the Spirit of God asking someone today. You're asking for a job. Why do you want the job? You're asking for money. Why do you want the money? Okay? You're even asking for a husband or a wife. Why do you want the husband or wife? You're asking for a child. Why do you want a child? The big question, the why. The why strikes through to our motive. And I'll tell you 
something was very obvious that day that I could not deny. My motive, my reason for wanting the church to grow was selfish. That's the word <laughs> I can confess, right? Was selfish. Human nature is inherently selfish. Maybe that's why we like selfies, right? <laughs> like we say. Thank God for the phone and the camera. Selfies. And, and honestly, I, I learned something very profound. That when you're part of a picture, the first person you look for in the picture is you. And if you don't like the way the picture looks, the picture is bad. Or you don't like the way you look in the picture, then the picture or photograph is bad, right? Human nature is inherently selfish. The beautiful thing, though, is that we have the potential to be selfless. That's what I also discovered. We have the potential to be selfish, but basically we go for selfishness. Our world is going through a difficult time right now. Things have changed. Economies struggling. Honestly, inflation rate exploding. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, <laughs> wars going on and we're trying to get over a pandemic. Oh my God. So it was on the news, you know, some days ago that um, some COVID restrictions were partially lifted in Shanghai, in China, where people had been under lockdown for 65 days. People were rejoicing on the streets. It's, it's not the best of times, right? And there's a war going on right now in, in Ukraine, right? With millions of people displaced from their homes. This is not the best of times. And, and when we find ourselves in difficult times, difficult seasons or, or circumstances like that, our selfishness kicks in because the instinct for survival is the strongest in man. We need to learn, even in the midst of difficult circumstances, to prioritize other people. That's how Christ went about it. <laughs> he went about doing good to others, not to himself, to others. Let's read about Christ and his example in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, New Living Translation. Philippians 2, 3 to 5, New Living Translation. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Wow. So it is clear from scriptures. <laughs> Paul, the apostle goes for it straight. In Philippians 2, don't be selfish. Don't be concerned only for your own things. Be concerned about the needs of other people. That is the call of the Holy Spirit to every single one of us today. Turn the focus. The same way the Holy Spirit confronted me that day, that's how I'm passing it on to someone today. Turn the focus from yourself, turn it to other people. There's power there. We're going to get there in a few minutes. But first, selfishness is being concerned excessively with oneself. Being concerned excessively with oneself. For some people, it's actually being concerned exclusively with oneself. Exclusively. Sometimes we don't, we don't even think about other people. Only us. Selfishness is seeking one's own advantage, pleasure, and well-being without regard to others. Seeking one own, one's own advantage, pleasure, or well-being without regard to others. 
selfishness is putting our goals, priorities, and needs before everyone else's. Even those who are really in need. <laughs> putting our own goals, our priorities, our needs before everyone else's, even those that are really in need. The more desperate our circumstances are, the more selfish we tend to be as humans. And that's why it's important for us to discuss this right now. Because the more selfish we are, the worse our world becomes. I promise you, every part of our systems, our human systems, will malfunction as long as we allow selfishness to reign. James chapter 3, verse 16, New Living Translation. James 3, 16. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every and evil of every kind. <laughs> you will find what? Disorder and evil of every kind. If you find selfishness in the family, you will find this other, you will find evil of every kind. It was selfish ambition that caused problems in the first family, at least in recorded history. Mm -hmm. Mother, mother, mother in the, in, in the family, the very first one. Once something went wrong with the nature that God gave us originally, we got the nature of sin, selfishness came in, problems started. And in James chapter 4, verse 13, James the apostle tells us that selfishness will hinder our prayers. Selfishness will hinder our prayers. There are all kinds of prayers being said these days that are not being answered because they are selfish in their motives. James 4.3, New Living Translation. James 4.3. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. I believe that selfishness is a measure of lack of love. When they asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment, what did he say? <laughs> love. Love God. Okay. Love your neighbor as yourself. When we are selfish, we put our own interests even ahead of God's own interests. That's why some prayers are not answered because 1 John 5, 14 says, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know we have the petitions we have requested from him. <laughs> okay, so... So some, somebody said, God answers his own prayer points, okay? It's when we pray in line with his plans, with his purposes, that the prayers are answered, right? <laughs> He's not expecting us to invent new purposes for our own lives. He has his own purposes. He has his plans. He has his own interests. What did Christ say in John chapter 4, verse 23? God is a spirit, those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Father is seeking for such to worship him. God also has needs, you know. God also has needs. So a lot of prayers are not being answered because they are selfish. They are not born out of love. Not love for God. Not love for other people. Now, if, if there was an equipment for measuring love, I would love to have it. I would call it lovometer, okay? <laughs> but then in the absence of such an equipment, one of the ways we, we measure the presence or absence of love is the measure of selfishness or selflessness or sacrifice. The less love, the more selfishness. The more love, the less the selfishness in our world. Mm, well, honestly, if you ask each of us, are you selfish or not? I'm sure we'll be quick to say, oh, no, 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 I'm not selfish at all. Anyway, let's ask ourselves a few questions, right? Number one, 
Do I find it stressful to listen to other people's problems? <laughs> okay. Do I find it stressful to listen to other people talking about their problems? Number two. Do I have a negative reaction when asked to give to charity? Mm -mm. <laughs> Go fund me. Let's contribute money to help this person to do this. Mm, everybody has his own problem, you know. Everybody has his own. I have a lot of responsibilities. Mm, do I have a reaction? <laughs> Negative reaction when asked to give to charity. Mm. Next. Do I give only when I can get something back? Look, nothing is free. Nothing in this world, nothing is free. Do I only give when I can get something back? Next. Do I take credit for success even when it was the whole team that did the work? Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's, that's a measure, right? One, two, three, four, five, Score yourself. Let me score myself. Do I take credit for success even when it was the whole team that did the work? And then next, do I like to take food first, even ahead of my guests? Eh, <laughs> forgive my expressions. I'm just trying to add salt and pepper to the discussion. Do I jump ahead of everybody to get food? Now, Yes, 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 yes. I, I know somebody will be saying, oh, did you grow up in Africa? <laughs> do, do you understand what it means when the food is not enough? Exactly, exactly. So that's the point, isn't it? That wherever there is selfishness, there will be scarcity. Am I right? Absolutely, yes. Have you been to wedding receptions before where the food finished before it got halfway or <laughs> covered two-thirds of the crowd? And you would be surprised to find out they cooked enough food to get around everybody. Oh, yeah, somebody took two rations. Some, someone probably three because they were close to the serving or they were even part of those serving the food. Wherever there is selfishness, there will be scarcity. Wherever there is selflessness, there is sacrifice, there will be abundance. Right? So, some of us have grown up in cultures where there is a high level of selfishness, so there is scarcity. And that scarcity has also programmed us for selfishness, right? So we want to get ahead of others and we don't care whether they get or not. But I just want to say this. Our world gets better. Our world gets more beautiful when we learn to prioritize other people. Our world gets more beautiful when we learn to shift the focus on other people and to prioritize them. That is God's call to us today, to prioritize other people. Like I said earlier on, our best example here, our best model here is Jesus Christ. So I'm going to wrap this up just by reading. I'll let the Bible speak for itself. I want to read Philippians chapter 2, right from the Message Bible. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 11. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of that obedience, 
God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever so that all created beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the Father. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, oh, thank you, Jesus. Seeing Jesus Christ as he, he made the ultimate sacrifice, sacrificed his life, put other people ahead of himself. In fact, in Romans chapter 5, the Bible says if he had done it for good people, we would understand he did it for us while we were still sinners. Having done that, God lifted him, raised him on high above everything and everybody else. Thank you, Lord, as you make that shift today. That was what I did when God confronted me years ago. Having gone through all the deprivation, I experienced the challenges I went through and so on fire. I still decided I'm not going to focus on myself. I'm going to focus on other people. As I went on radio when I did not even think I was successful yet. The little bit I read about success, I began to teach other people. That's where it is, right? That's where the promotion is. I want you right now to realize some people are in the hospital. You are enjoying good health. Some people are in the hospital right now. Some people's lives are in danger right now. Some are in critical condition right now. Right now, I'm telling you, some people don't know where the next meal is going to come from right now. Some people are in prison right now. Some for what they did, some for what they did not do. But there are people confined right now. They can move about like you do. They don't have the freedom to move about. Even whether they did the right thing or the wrong thing, they are confined. Think about that. Okay? There are families right now, millions of families displaced from their homes. Some of their homes have been bombed, burnt, destroyed. People who've had to run out of their countries as refugees. Think about that right now, right now. All right, right now. I want to call on you today, just like Elisha the prophet called on the widow that ran to him for a financial breakthrough because debtors went there to take her two sons in 2 Kings chapter 4. Elisha the prophet shifted her focus from her need, from her lack, told her to go borrow empty barrels from her neighbors, and he told her, don't borrow a few. I'm asking you right now to take your attention from off your own need and focus it on the emptiness in people's lives right now. People are going through a lot. If you think you are going through anything, just multiply it by a million. There are many more people going through the same thing right now. Would you allow God to use you as a channel to reach out to people that are in need? Don't forget what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33. Say, yeah, I know you have needs. He said, but you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. It's time for us to not just tell people about heaven. It's time for us to bring heaven to people. That's what Jesus preached. Have a change of mind. The kingdom of heaven is here. No hunger in heaven. He gave people food to eat. No sicknesses and diseases in heaven. He healed them. It's time to bring heaven heaven to people now because some people are living in hell right here on earth. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ as you shift the attention off from yourself and shift it to other people. You accept this God, this call from God to be a solution provider to other people like Jesus was. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. I prophesy a miracle flow in your life. The power of God will intervene in your life. The widow in 2 Kings 4 took the small jar of oil and began to pour it into empty large barrels. There was a miracle flow from the small jar. I prophesy, however small you think the money has been, you think your talent is or your skills are, I prophesy there will be a miracle flow that God will begin to do amazing things through your life beyond your human capacity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's start from somewhere right now. Let's do the practicals. I want you to pray for someone right now. Let's go ahead. Pray for someone. 
whatever need you have in your own life right now, think of someone that has the same need and pray for them right now. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus. Pray for someone to get a job. Yes, pray for someone to get a home. Yes, in Jesus' name, pray for someone to get a baby. In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 pray for someone to get their healing right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. That's the starting point. That's the starting point. That's the starting point. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you. We're grateful to you. As your people pray right now, as we shift the focus from ourselves, let your power flow. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Heavenly Father. All those people we're praying for right now, let your power flow into their lives. But a miracle in someone's life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now, Heavenly Father, thank you for us, the channels that you are using to bless them. Let your power touch our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as each person under the sound of my voice, let go of self-centeredness. Let your power fall on them. <laughs> God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Yes, Lord. Let your power fall on us. Right now in Jesus' name, give us supernatural creativity, supernatural ideas. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let your raw power flow through our lives. Let obstacles that could stop us before be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. Let the gifts of the Spirit, supernatural talents be activated in our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Do amazing things through our lives this week in the name of Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, I prophesy on everyone who's praying for healing for other people. Let sicknesses be removed from our lives and let them stay far away in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying for someone to get a financial breakthrough, bring financial breakthrough into their own lives this week. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I pray for supernatural protection for everyone under the sound of my voice. There may be violence out on the streets, but your word says a thousand may fall by our sight, ten thousand at our right hand, it will not come near us. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I prophesy safety for everyone under the sound of my voice. The ministry of angels, your going out is blessed. Your coming back in is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. Thank you for amazing testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Who can sense that something just shifted? Hallelujah. Supernatural promotion is here. And I just wanted to say this. If you were praying for someone with a particular need and you actually have what they need, stop praying. Go and give it to them. Amen. <laughs> if you have food, go give the food to them. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I pray for that person under the sound of my voice. You are a part of our service today on TV, physically at any of our locations, online. Your relationship with God is not okay. That's the starting point. It's a nature. Love is a nature and it is God that gives us that nature. Every human being was born with the nature of sin. And that's where you find selfishness. Can we pray together? Because Jesus already died for you, died for my sins, paid for our sins. Can we pray together and receive forgiveness from God? All right, can you put your hand on your heart where you are and say this prayer after me? Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the great miracle happening all around the world. Right now, in Jesus' name, everyone who said this prayer, let the power of your spirit fall on them, O oh God. Thank you for removing the nature of sin from them and putting your own nature of love in them. Teach them to know you, Heavenly Father. Teach them to cultivate a deep relationship with you and let your power help them to grow spiritually. In Jesus' name. Day Star, Raising Role Models.